OK, we've all just watched the Prime Minister and Simon Shepard there. I'm going to open it up, get all of your thoughts. Josie, what did you think, first of all, of the interview? Uh, I thought she was a bit edgy, a little bit defensive, maybe, um, but a few key signals there. So one is we're not going to get a tax cut. We're not going to get any systemic change. We're going to have something, and the quote was, time-limited and targeted. So it's going to be something like, you know, the cost of benefit payment or an increase in, in benefit levels or something like that, which I think is a missed opportunity because we're seeing from polling right across the world, let alone in New Zealand, that voters want you to chuck, they want governments to chuck the kitchen sink mm. at inflation and cost of living. Everything. Tax switch. You know, you can pay for a tax cut with a tax switch. Mm. You know, take um, tax off income earners and put it onto wealth. Might be a CGT, might be capital gains tax, wealth tax, whatever. Missed opportunity, I think. Jenna, what were your thoughts? Yeah, I think the Prime Minister was really defensive in the interview. Interestingly as well, trying to kind of paint herself as this battler. She's you know, saying, <laughs> yeah. you know, you want me to take the politically easy route. She doesn't want to go there. And I think she's trying to paint Labour as the underdog for next year's election. She's uh, looking at the political landscape at the moment and trying to... Um, she's come off that massive high from 2020 and can read the room and is trying to paint herself as the underdog rather than the shoe in Agnes? Look, I, I think clearly, you know, she's trying to paint... Uh, inflation as this nebulous thing out there that's got nothing to do with this government. Mm. Um, you know, when we in fact, people know that there are levers that this government pulls that have a direct impact on the cost of living pressures that we're facing now. It is so difficult though, isn't it? Because inflation is so toxic politically and we are seeing governments right around the world struggling and failing to do so on many fronts with mm. this issue. But it is going to be the defining one of the election. How do they turn that around, Gina? Yeah, I think Josie's right. I think what she was pointing to there was maybe another one of those cost of living payments and perhaps that might be something that she announces tomorrow at her conference. I think they'll probably want to turn things around um, before summer as well try and get... The, the, the electorate feels quite grumpy with the government at the moment. Yes. They don't want to head into the summer season like that. And I think they want... The, it, there's an interesting sort of dynamic, isn't there? That I think the, the voters want not to hear so much inspiration a mm. bit more perspiration. They actually <laughs> want to see the government do some stuff that's going to impact on them. And I think what you are seeing there though is the, the attacks on national and I think that National has left themselves open to that, I would say, mm. by proposing a tax cut. I mean, even Rishi Sunak in the UK is putting taxes up. Mm. You know, he's also cutting spending, but he's putting taxes up. So I think, I think National is vulnerable there and, and Labour have, have smelt the blood and they'll go after Luxon, they'll go after National about, you know, you can't do a tax cut and do deal to debt and keep public services going. You can't do all three of those at the same time. Pick yeah. one. I noticed something else today too, which is um, the Prime Minister doing a little bit, Grant Robertson did it in his speech, which is harking back to we the way that we dealt with COVID. We led the country through COVID. We can lead the country through this cost of living crisis. But Kiwis are over COVID now, aren't they? They're concerned about their pocketbooks. That is a distant memory. It's not going to necessarily get the government through. Well, I think also increasingly, Kiwis are actually feeling that they were duped. You know, they put a lot of trust into the government. They put a lot of trust in Jacinda Ardern. Um, and now more and more I hear that people are thinking, actually, what was done for us? I don't think that was actually fair and right. And we're, we're seeing the fallout from it. So that it comes to, again, trust in her and her personal brand. Um, Gina, this, she said something else that caught my eye, which was that this is going to be a classic MMP election. And that's what the polling is telling us right now, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the scenario where we're going to get another majority government just seems completely mm. and utterly out of the water. This is going to be a drag race between the left and the right blocks. And they're going to have to make some concessions where they haven't been in this term of government. Labour has, ha had, has been unbridled by everyone. They've mm. been allowed to do whatever they want to do. Do, um, this time around and National will probably start looking at some of those act policies as well and go oh what are we going to have to give up to them in yeah, coalition be, negotiations. Which, which one looks the most worrying to the voters? Mm. Is it the right block or the left block? You know, are they going to be worried about a Labour, Green, New Zealand First, Māori Party, well New Zealand First who knows where or will they be worried about National Act? But one thing we saw in that interview just then, they're rethinking Three Waters aren't they? They're going to mm. reframe it, they might even rename it. Um, so that's interesting, they're realising that they can't go into next year with a bunch of unpopular policies. I mean, good luck finding three people who understand three waters, <laughs> but everybody <laughs> hates it. <laughs> and they do have a lot of controversial um, or unpopular reforms to go. We touched on some of those in that interview. Are they, they're going to head into election year uh, with quite a lot uh, to sort of fix up from this year, aren't they, Agnes? 
Um, exactly. And, finish and, and off, I, I mean, they're already indicating, you know, hate speech laws and, and a whole lot of other reforms which don't actually address cost of living. So in one end they're saying cost of living is really important, it's a priority. Oh, but we're going to put these mm. through. These are really important too. So they don't connect. Well, uh, next year as well, when you get to January, that fuel tax, at, at this stage, that fuel tax is going back on. They're going to have to start election year by putting a tax on Kiwis at the petrol pump. That is not how you yeah, want to Yeah, you'll go to the batch and your petrol will cost this much. You'll come back from the batch and it's going to cost you more. Yeah. It's not great timing for the government and there's a lot of economic clouds on the horizon next year too. It may have to deal with, uh, but thank you so much for your analysis.